In this tutorial we're going to be taking a look at methods in Java and before I start talking about creating your own methods I just want to use this first tutorial to talk about methods that you're you, you're probably already familiar with and give you an idea of why methods are used and why they're useful. So the first method I'm going to talk about is one of the system methods. So if you've learned even the basics of Java programming you've probably done some sort of message such as the standard hello world introductory program and that hello world makes use of system.out.println so if you've done this you've already made use of a method you may not have called it that at the time so what is this as a method a method is a sub program it is a program within the framework of your Java program. So in the case of the system methods, because there are multiple ones, print line is just one of them. This is a program that some other author or team of authors has written to allow you to quickly and easily uh, display information on your whatever your output terminal happens to be. Here in Dr. Java, it's going to end up being the interactions pane down here below. If you're running a Java program from a terminal, it will be the terminal. And if you're doing more complicated interactions into a, um, into a graphics window, you would have other methods that you would use to send output there. So system.out.println is a method that is specifically written to send information to whatever your default output device is. And in this case, it's my interactions pane. So that is an example of a method that someone else wrote. It's something you're going to use a lot, something you've probably used a lot already, and it's predefined. And the advantage of it is that rather than having to, first of all, figure out how to write that code yourself, and secondly, having to duplicate that code many, many times over, every time you want to put something out on your display, you can just use this very convenient command system.out.println now this is an example of a command and another word for this is called so this is a procedure or a command or some people might call it an action and what that means is you're essentially this this subprogram this method goes and does something for you and it, that's the limit of the interaction with it. You basically, you tell it to go do what you want it to do and then you forget about it. You're not waiting for anything in return. Another type of method that you're going to be dealing with is something that's known as a function and that is sometimes known as a query or you could think of it as a question. Question and query are really synonyms, uh, synonyms for each other. And now I'm going to refer to something that I've used especially in my courses, which is a reference to the in class. Um, input in Java is not always convenient. And so I have my students using a, a packaged class for input. And again, this is an example of a bunch of subprograms that another author has put together for convenience. So to illustrate that, I'm going to declare myself a couple of variables here. So I'll declare myself a variable for age, that's an integer, and I'll declare a variable string, which is a name. And so an example of a function or query or question, that is a method or subprogram where you don't just call it or invoke it and forget about it. When you invoke a function, you actually are waiting for the function to actually tell you something in return. So in my case, if I want to know the user's age, I might say age is equal to in.getInt. And so this is a reference to the in class and get int is one of the many methods in that class and in this case it's going to get an integer I could also do something like name equals in dot get string 
And so there we have another example of an input method. It's in the same class called in, but this one has been designed to specifically get a collection of characters from the keyboard. So that is an example of two different types of methods. One of them is a procedure, which is just something that goes and does something. And the other type is a function or a query. And not only does it perform some actions on its own, but the result of those actions is returned as a value. And typically, we will save that value in a variable. There's one other type that I'm going to refer to, and that is uh, there's an entire library of uh, math methods. And some of these are procedures, but most of them are functions. And those are going to be the ones you're going to be most familiar with. And the way they work is the same way as this custom in. So these math methods, these are uh, built into Java, which means everybody who works with Java should have access to them. And so, for example, let me just declare another variable, um, double x. And let me actually go further and I'll declare double x to be equal to 5.5. .5. A math method is going to allow me to perform different mathematical operations. And I want you to also see that you can use functions because they return something this this print line is outputting something what goes here doesn't necessarily have to be a string it could be a variable or it could be something that I could store in a variable so I could for example say I could do something like this x equals math.sqrt of x so here I'm just using this function in a straightforward way the value of x, we always start on the right side of the equal sign. The value of x is currently 5.5. Math.sqrt quite obviously calculates the square root of whatever it is that we put in these brackets. And then whatever that answer is gets stored in x. Another way we could use this is I could do a combination of methods. I could say system.out.println of math.sqrt of x and in this case x is whatever the result it was from the previous line and then we take the square root of x and then we output that result to the interactions pane so you can see that you can use the return value from a method you can use that as the argument to you can use that as the argument for assigning a variable. You could also use that as an argument for another method. And the way you string these together, really, it's, it's limited only by, obviously, the rules of Java and how your imagination and the way that you structure things in your mind, how you think about these things. Obviously, some people would rather just calculate the square root, and then they'd want to output the variable on its own, and that's perfectly fine as well. Okay, so there is a very quick introduction to the idea of methods. The idea that these are predefined programs that someone else has written. Some of them are provided to you as part of the Java standard package. Some of them may be these custom programs that are provided to you by a teacher or by a colleague or by the company that you work for. But they're predefined for you. You're allowed to use them in your programs and you don't have to write them yourself and that means that you actually don't have to know how they work as well. And that's the end of this tutorial.